He is known as the virus hunter. Ken Stedman, a biologist and virologist at Portland State University, is an expert on how viruses evolve and how vaccines are developed. He joins us via Skype this morning to talk about the novel coronavirus. Ken, good morning. Good morning, Emily. So let's start off with talk about this vaccine. Public health officials say a, a clinical trial just started Monday in Seattle. We saw the first patient uh, tested with this potential vaccine. Why could this process still take a year to 18 months to really be widespread for the public? So that's a great question, Emily. Now, first, I just want to give kudos to the scientists who did this. This has gone incredibly fast in terms of getting a vaccine even into people in the first place. Uh, but the thing with vaccines is you're giving a vaccine to someone who is not sick. And so the real crucial aspect about all vaccines is they have to be safe. And so this is exactly what this first trial is. You're making sure that the vaccine is safe. So you're going into people, you're injecting them with this vaccine, and they've got to wait and you've got to do different levels to see how um, what amounts of the vaccine can be used to make sure that it's safe. Once that happens, then you have to make figure out if this vaccine is actually working. And that's a test where you need a lot more people and a lot more time. And then finally, to show that you really have proper protection and again, complete safety, you've got to look at thousands of people and you've got to wait for months to actually get results of those tests. And even after you get those results, it's safe, it works, then you've got to ramp up the production. And if you think about this particular coronavirus vaccine, this is going to be, have to be for almost everybody in the world. So you need really um, huge numbers of doses. So that's going to take a long time as well. And as everybody has said, it's probably looking at about 18 months before we actually have a vaccine available for people. Yeah, it is it's quite a waiting game. I know it's it's got to be frustrating for people as we watch this day in and day out. But I know in the meantime, you know, we're seeing public health officials taking a lot of steps here, trying to really encourage social distancing and a whole community effort here to, to stop the spread. We've seen uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci, the director of the National Institute of Infectious Diseases, uh, he's been saying this week, you know, if we feel like we're overreacting, that means that we're kind of on course with where we should be, that we'll be thankful we overreacted. Is this the right course of action, some of these drastic daily life steps we're taking? So uh, first caveat, I hunt viruses. I don't do public health. <laughs> so um, I, this is kind of beyond my expertise, but it certainly seems to me to be the right choice. And I completely agree with them. The big problem with public health interventions is if they work, then nothing happens. And sure. so and people are immediately going to say, oh, well, I didn't have to do anything because nothing happened. No, something didn't happen. And that's the whole point of the public health measures. Right, and right. so it's really kind of invisible. These public health measures, if they work, they're invisible. It's not unlike the virus. So it's also invisible. And so you have to be very careful about you know, really sticking to these things. And again, I'm not an expert in this. I trust the experts and... Tony Fauci is an amazing communicator and an amazing scientist, and I'll definitely trust him. Now, as you're hunting this invisible virus, what are you learning about uh, how it's maybe being spread, in particular on, on surfaces, through the air? I know a lot of people are wondering, you know, just how contagious is this? What, are, what is your research uncovering? Okay, so this is not specifically my research, but it's research that I've been following. And it turns out that yes, the virus can survive on surfaces. There was a really great study that was done by, again, groups of the National Institutes of Health under the direction of Tony Fauci, where they looked at how long the virus can be viable on surfaces. And you know, literally, if you drop a little bit and they specifically took the virus and put it on surfaces and then check to see how long that would actually be something that could infect cell cultures. So we don't know, and one of the big problems now is we don't know how much of the virus you have to probably inhale because it's droplets and get into your respiratory system in order to get sick. And so since we don't have a good handle on that number, it's really hard to say if the stuff that's on surface is really is infectious. Stuff that's on surface can stay infectious, but it loses infectivity actually very rapidly. And if people are interested, I actually wrote about this on my blog, that you can check out later, um, more details. But um, the take home message is it can survive on surfaces. The question is what survives on surfaces after a relatively short period of time? 
is that enough to still be infectious? And that we don't know, and that's an area of research, again, not me, but other researchers are really trying to find out. Yeah, something we are all racing to try and uncover. Ken, thank you. We appreciate the work that you and other researchers are doing. And remember, you can find much more of our coverage now on coin.com. We'll link to Ken's blog as well if you want to learn more about what he's been looking into. Okay.